So we thought about the hallucination theory, and in this video we're thinking about the swoon theory. Now see what you think of this. The swoon theory uh, is the idea that when Jesus was on the cross, he fainted. People thought he was dead. They placed him in the tomb. In the cool of the tomb, he came to. He then gets out of the tomb, appears to the disciples. They think, hey, we saw him die on the cross and now he's come back to life. And then they go around proclaiming that Jesus is resurrected from the dead. Now, that on the surface has explanatory scope because it, exp it, it takes into account that Jesus was crucified. It takes into account, you know, he crucified under Pontius Pilate. It takes into account that he was placed in the tomb. It takes into account that the tomb was found empty and also that the disciples proclaimed the resurrection. So it does have on the surface explanatory scope. But I think if you scratch beneath the surface, the whole thing be begins to fall down. Firstly, it's not likely at all that Jesus survived the crucifixion. In all of history, there are only two people recorded who survived the crucifixion. Um, one is Jesus. The other is a man who is crucified along with two, of, two other men, two of his friends. Uh, the thing is, this guy who was being crucified was known by and friends by with a man who was very influential, a man called Josephus. He was an, he was a, 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 an historian. Now, what happened is these guys had been crucified. As soon as Josephus heard out his friends were being crucified, he went to the authorities and he said, you take them down now. And so they hadn't been being crucified for long when they were taken down. They were taken down early. And then they were given the best medical treatment they had during their day. The thing is this, um, out of the three, only one of them survived. And so, but that was exception, um, exceptional circumstances. The only other person that the, you know, we know of that survived is Jesus. So that tells us that you know, crucifixion wasn't something that you just fainted on the cross by. Crucifixion was a torture that had been perfected over hundreds of years by the time the Romans were doing it in Jesus' time, they had it off to a T. They knew how to make someone really, really, really suffer to the point of death. They knew how to drag it out so they suffered for a maximum period of time. And so the idea that Jesus swooned is very unlikely. There's another reason why it's unlikely. And the reason why it's unlikely is also a reason why people say he swooned. Because the Bible makes the note that when Jesus, before Jesus was taken down for the cross, it, it notes that the, the soldiers didn't break his legs. Now that's significant. You see, what would happen is they would crucify their victims. They'd usually crucify a few at a time. And then um, to, before taking them down, they would take a baton and break their legs. The reason they would break their legs is because of how crucifixion worked. You see, if you were stretched out on a cross like that, if someone took your arms and stretched them out and lifted you up, you would suffocate within about six minutes. And that was why crucifixion was such a torture. The, the victim, they'd, be, um, they'd have their um, arms nailed to the cross and their feet nailed. The, the cross was then lifted up and dropped in its stand, at which point all the bones would dislocate. And then from then on, the victim would start to suffocate very quickly. And the only way that he could stop himself suffocating was to push up on the nails. When the pain was too excruciating, they would begin to hang again on their arms and start suffocating. This would go on for hours. So when it came to taking them down, to make sure they were dead first, they would break their legs. And that meant they could no longer push up which meant they would die of suffocation within six minutes, without fail. But they didn't break Jesus' legs. They didn't break his legs and say what some people say is, ah, oh, so he could have survived. But that fails to uh, understand that the reason they didn't break his legs was because they were sure he was dead. In fact, what we do also read is that when, rather than break his legs, one soldier drove a spear up under Jesus' ribcage. So he just pushed the spear up into his side. And the Bible records that there was a flow, a short flow of blood and water. Now that little note, a flow of blood and water, is, a, is very uh, kind of instructive because they didn't know then what we know now. Water and blood in the human body only separates after death. 
that was clear. They didn't even know they were doing it, but they were given clear evidence that Jesus was dead. So there is no way that Jesus just fainted and then came to in the grave. If he did faint, he'd have just died in the tomb. And so it, it lacks credibility. And even if he did you know, manage to come to in the tomb, the, the idea that he managed to then remove this huge stone, you cannot move a big stone like the ones that are across the tomb entrances. The idea that he managed to do that on his own and appeared to the disciples as the conqueror of death is ridiculous. He'd have like been gasping for breath. And, uh, and it also fails to explain what happened to Jesus afterwards. Are we to believe that he just carried on living and didn't do anything amazing after that? How would that start the Christian faith? Um, the swoon theory lacks explanatory scope and explanatory power. 